I think it's uh, time for me to replace these old fluorescent lights here in my uh, garage slash workshop slash studio. This one isn't uh, even working anymore. A uh, easy, affordable and practical solution would be just to buy new similar sized uh, LED lights and replace the ones I have. Or maybe buy conversion LED uh, tubes that you can fit into the existing lights. But if you have seen some of my other videos, you know, I have a tendency to overcomplicate my project. No exception this time. Can you see behind me there on that table? I have 270 feet, that's 80 meters of LED strips. And that's a total of 6,000 of the small LED bulbs to be powered by 1,600 watts. And it's a lot of other equipment there as well, DIY stuff to make it all go together. Instead of me trying to explain this project, I have the power to manipulate space and time. Ready? And welcome to the future! And what a bright future it is! My garage lights are done. Everything is working perfectly. I'm so happy about this solution. What you see now is a pulsating light, a chase going from warm white to natural daylight to cool white. I can totally decide what kind of color, mood, temperature I want to have here in the garage. And this is just the top of the iceberg. This isn't even the top of the iceberg. This is just some of the effects. I can totally select any colors and I can switch and control all my lights. Oh, I'm so happy about this solution. But this poor guy there in the past, he is not knowing about how much work this was. This is actually four months into the future and he's gonna meet a lot of struggle along the path before he ends up here, before I end up here. Let me go back. And you're back. I really hope it turned out okay because I don't know yet. Now you know how this is gonna end? I don't know. But what I know is I can just start. And the first thing is to take down my uh, uh, existing light and um, to not get a completely dark room here. I want to transform my ceiling lights to wall lights. So uh, the reason I want to replace them is just because uh, yeah, they stop working one by one. I repaired two of them and currently the third one is uh, not working anymore. But of course, uh, replacing fluorescent uh, lights to LED is uh, mainly smart because you save uh, power, less power consumption. And also uh, recording is quite terrible, uh, the lights this emits. You get this greenish tint out of them if you compare different kind of light sources with natural light. Fluorescent lights are just terrible. I think LEDs are going to be better. And the ones I have bought are um, CRI 90 plus. Much better than this, probably 10 minus. And uh, then I can convert this to uh, temporary work lights. I've already prepared one here, put on a regular power cord. Like this. And the next step is then to rearrange the layout of my ceiling. If you remember, I had uh, these fluorescent lights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I'm gonna put up the LED lights, I have planned to have one, two, three, four lights, five meter long. So this part of the ceiling needs to change. And uh, I don't like this yellowish color either on the ceiling. So I think I'll paint it. So everything needs to come down. Better get started.
The most uh, labor intensive and probably the most boring part of the project is then done. But what a difference it made, don't you think? Then ready for the next step of the project. That is to install the LED lights. Uh, or I need to fabricate them first. I couldn't find 17 feet long, 5 meters long LED lights in the shop, so I'm gonna make them myself. These uh, LED strip aluminium channels are 1 meter, that's approximately 3 feet per piece, and uh, I need to connect five of those to get the length I'm after. I'm cutting out small pieces of this uh, two millimeter aluminium sheet metal and uh, use my bender to make some profiles out of it to make them even stronger. Then drill some holes to them. And these are the pieces I want to use for joining the one meter aluminium channels together. And that's how I connected five of these uh, aluminium channels into one long LED light. So the next is then to put the lights into the channel. And I have uh, two types of uh, LED lights. One of them is uh, around 3000 Kelvin, that's warm white. The other one is uh, approximately 6000 Kelvin. So I will combine these two if I want this cool or warm white here in the garage. So let me start with uh, one of the LED strips. Let me check if it works. I have a 9 volt battery here. Yep, seems to work. Nice. And then it's uh, just to glue this. This is quite a fun task. And then comes uh, the last job, putting on the lids, the diffuser. And uh, what I did was I cut one of them in uh, half, so I can start with a half-sized one, then a full-size. So here, where I have the joint, I will have a fully-sized cover on top. Maybe that will stiffen it up. So yeah, let me put them on. Quite a satisfying uh, sound. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Or is it just me? I might have forgotten to tell you about this uh, strange bend here. It's because of my garage door. One part of my ceiling has a slimmer sound uh, panels so this is going along with the bottom of my sound panels you will see it when i install it on in my ceiling so i needed to make this curve here the lid is on let me test it once more with the 9 volt battery Ooh, nice so this is only a 9 volt battery, so it will be much uh, stronger than this with uh, 12 volts. But uh, anyway, this is how it's gonna look like. Um, yeah. And then, according to my plan, it's time to install them. Or you might have guessed, I don't really have a plan, I more like have a goal. And then I figure out along the path what is smart to do next. And uh, to install this, I uh, want to use these small brackets. Maybe you saw them and I unboxed the aluminium channels. These goes on the back side of the aluminium channels and they are snapped on into this uh, uh, groove here, like this. But I will not be using one and one of these small brackets. As you can see here, I've made a lot of these bigger brackets that has four of these on each. And that is because I will have four of these aluminium channels in pairs. That's not right to say, but four and four of those. 
So uh, this bracket and this bracket will go up uh, against the ceiling and make a bit of a distance again uh, because of my sound panels and my garage door, blah blah, I'll show you soon. Yeah, this um, bracket, this one was pretty easy to make. It, it was just an aluminium pipe, one by one centimeter, drilling some holes using rivets, attaching the four uh, clamps. This one was a bit more work because I had a two millimeter aluminium sheet metal that I needed to cut up, bend it, drill it. If I knew how much work, no, I'm glad I didn't know how much work this was. I have already attached some of these up against my ceiling, so I can uh, now attach the first one. Crossing fingers, hope everything turns out. The most labor intensive and perhaps the most boring part of the job is finally done. It took some time to build this. 100 brackets were handmade, bent, drilled 500 holes, 400 rivets, 100 screws approximately, but it's finally here. What do you think? Decent? I think it uh, looks nice, but of course you need to get some power here to see how it looks like with the lights on. But before I do that, I just want to explain this bend to you. You see here that I'm following these uh, sound panels. This one is uh, three centimeters, this one is seven centimeters. So the brackets have uh, different sizes, so it can follow on the uh, underside of the uh, panels. The reason for it is the garage door. You can't see it, it's there. But when it goes up, the garage doors uh, barely hits the sound panels and then it goes and stops before the bend on the lights. And then I'm almost ready to get started with the final and most fun part of the project. And that is to provide the 12 volt current to this so I can get some light out of them. But I have this small little fun thing to do first. For your information, when you have 96 of this, it's that fun. Done. It's time to prepare the power for the LED strips. I still just have my battery here to show you. This first channel is the cool white, the daylight color. The next one is warm white and the third one is also cool white. So I want to combine these three to get the exact color balance, uh, color temperature here in my garage when I'm recording. I need to be able to have a dimmer for each of these channels so I can balance exactly how bright each of them are going to be. What about the fourth one? They can be red, green or blue. So this is RGB and it's uh, inbuilt three channels with three colors here. So I also need to be able to dim these channels separately and then I can blend in the colors I want. So if I'm blending blue and red, I will get purple, for instance. So by combining this, I can add some flavor to the lights here or maybe just not use this and get a very colorful garage here. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but why not? How am I gonna deal with this dimming? I have bought this DMX decoder for it. And DMX 512 is like the system I will be using. And if you haven't heard about DMX, well, then there are two of us. I don't really know much about it either. So I'm learning along here in the process. These uh, are used in theaters, on uh, stages, concerts, 
for controlling lights and light equipment. This is like professional grade stuff, except this is not really professional. This is uh, very reasonable priced stuff that you can pick up on Amazon or on eBay. This uh, decoder can be daisy chained so they can be connected one to the next. And uh, you can either use this uh, DMX cable or you can use a network cable, which are much more handy. At the end, I will have my, a longer uh, cable down to my control surface that will send signals. So it's sending digital signals to each of the box, which then are sending the exact amount of power on the output. I'm not happy about this solution at all. What I am happy about, I think it works well to put my control surface inside my cabinet here. So you can see my network cable is coming out of my cabinet. So inside here, here is the magic. This is the dimmer. A lot of fancy stuff is going on there, but more about that later. This I'm not happy about. I think it's too much of the cables are exposed. I'm doing welding, grinding, waving around with uh, metal stuff and yeah, I think this is a bit uh, risky. But while everything is exposed here, maybe I can explain. These are the power supplies. They are 400 watts, so they take uh, AC 240 volts in and 12 volts out. DC sending it to the decoders and the decoders then are sending a PVM signal. So that is pulses of uh, uh, current to the um, LED strips. Here you can see the network cables. So it's a receiving control signal, digital signal from my cabinet and then deciding how much power to send out to the LEDs. I think I want to try to remove most of this. Also, it doesn't look uh, as cool as I hoped, having cables and boxes here up in the ceiling. Uh, no, it's not my style. But I have an idea. Everything is taken down from my ceiling, all the electric components, and you saw me drilling hole. Wow, wow, wow. That is not my weld. My share broke, and I'm not even that heavy. But I have another one. Okay, a new chair. All the components, all the electrical components are taken down from the ceiling. And you saw me drilling holes. So my idea now is to put all the components inside of my ceiling, if that makes sense. These power supplies though are way too big. These are the lids I'm gonna cover up the holes with. And you can see they, yeah, you, you, I won't be able to put these into my ceiling. So I need smaller ones. Anyway, these didn't work at all. I tested them for quite a while and um, yeah, listen to this. Yeah, they have a built-in fan. I didn't know that when I bought them. What I did though was to put on a motor dimmer so I can turn down the fan speed. That helped a lot. I can even turn them completely off, but then they got a bit hot. These are 400 watts. I don't really need 400 watts. 300 watts is more than enough. 250, I think, should be enough really to, to power all my LED lights. And I thought buying very big, cheap ones, because this was really cheap. They cost 75 um, US dollars when I bought them for all four of them. And that's, that's very reasonable priced. And uh, since I only will be using 250 watts maximum, I thought this would be a good solution because uh, yeah, I have some overhead in case they are not as good as they're supposed to be. But then we have this other problem. Listen to this. When I start dimming the lights, 
these power supplies get, should I say, confused or stressed, they start to make this buzzing, high-pitched noise. I'm not sure if you can hear it. Depends on your speaker of, or if you're using headphones or if you're listening to this on your phone, maybe you won't uh, hear this high-pitched uh, pitched sound. But it's very irritating and I have four of these and they all make the buzzing sound. It's no problem when they are at full power, so it's when you are dimming them at certain levels, they're really stressed and make this buzzing noise. I don't like it, I can't cope with it. And also, when I used one of these for two of the dimming components, because I have one for the RGB lights and I have one for the white lights, it really stressed my power supply. It couldn't cope with the airplane. It's an airplane here. So, what I was about to say, they got very stressed when one power supply was powering two of the dimmers. The lights start pulsating or flickering. Anyway, these can't be used, but luckily they weren't expensive. Maybe I can use them to other projects. So, what I did, I bought this. A bit more expensive. They were uh, $120 for all of them. Uh, they are slim type and they seem to be, well, they look to be very professional and they were specified to be work usable for LED drivers, LED strips. Very small, no fans and you can listen here, 100% quiet until you start dimming the lights. They were even worse. Also, they became extremely hot. And I would never dare to put these into my ceiling. By the way, this one is 200 watt, this is 60 watt, and I, by splitting them up into separate power supplies per dimmer, I had no more of this flickering, this pulsating light. So that was sold, but uh, something called maximum power and something is called nominal power, more like what they can produce over the long run. So I think maybe these China produced drivers are more like maximum uh, specified so they can handle it for a short burst of time but they were so hot that uh, yeah, it felt dangerous. Another, another failed buy. So third attempt was even worse because I ordered some more expensive ones. Now we're up to $220 for a kit. Uh, it took a long time and finally when I got them I only got the small ones. So I only got half of what I ordered. But these are branded ones. They are more professional. But it was actually a luck that I didn't get the big one. These are the 60 watts and the big 200 watts, I never received them. So, um, and uh, I tested them and they have the same noise, high frequency noise when dimming. They don't like to be dimmed these either. I really had to struggle with this uh, high frequency sound. I did a lot of research and I found after a while, it wasn't easy to, to figure out what kind of power supply is fitted for DMX dimming, PVM dimming. But I found something about constant current, constant voltage. And maybe you are the expert that can explain this to me, but I ended up with these. And these are some beasts. And now we're talking $320 for four of these. Meanwell is the brand and these are heavy duty. One of these uh, weighs more than all of these. <laughs> so this feels really sturdy and really professional. And uh, they say they are both um, constant current and constant voltage and they have some adjustment knobs there to dial in the voltage precisely. And finally, I got something that worked. Just listen. 
I was so happy when I finally got this. The number is 300, so I thought they were 300 watts, but when I started to read the fine print, they are 264 watts nominal. But uh, they managed to drive all of my LED lights, so both of the drivers, no flickering, and no pulsating light. They was not near to getting hot. I had them on for full powers in hours after hour and no, no heat at all. So this, uh, yeah, I can't say how happy I'm about this. I can totally recommend them. ELG 300 and they have smaller ones as well. Meanwhile, they are, they, they are just mean. Buying all these power supplies and uh, testing them took quite some time. So it's actually been three months since I drilled the hole and started testing out these uh, power supplies. And uh, during this time, I had another quite serious problem as well. As I was working here in my garage, testing out the lights, one of them stopped working and uh, this happened. So this is the connector that is uh, on this uh, decoder, DMX decoder. And it says here they are rated for three uh, times eight amperage. So that should be plenty of um, capacity. My LED strips are maximum six amperage. So yeah, eight should be enough. But these connectors, it's the pins here that receives the 12 volt from the power supply. That's the one who got uh, burnt here. Maybe it wasn't properly secured uh, and had uh, a loose pin or something. But anyway, uh, this was not the only one. Another one also started to get a bit, uh, yeah, I could see burn marks on it. So what I decided to do is to open it and I soldered on thicker cables directly to the pins in here. So now I will only be using the three output pins for each of the LED strips. So I have much more sturdy cables for the 12 volt power into the controller. Tweaking, adjusting, improving them. It's time to put them to test. Let me show you some other preparations I've also done during these uh, three months. I've painted this part of the ceiling. Uh, this is my latch I use when I'm going upstairs. And uh, it works a bit better now. There's some insulation here, made a handle. But the important stuff, I added uh, LED lights here as well in the corner. It was a bit dark here, so this will help me get uh, lights everywhere, ev evenly across my garage. And you might also remember I drilled a hole here to have my signal cable from my control surface. I rearranged it, so now it goes into the ceiling. Yeah, and that's much better. I also extended the cables on the LED lights because uh, they were a bit short. And with the, all the cables prepared, Installing this should be an easy task. First, installing the power supply. Here are the data cables. They are plugged into the first DMX controller for the RGB lights. Then plugging in the power connector. The second DMX controller is for the white lights. Plugging in the data cables. This is the one with the custom power cables. Then the final step, just checking all the units and all the cables and then putting on the lid. And then doing a quick test. Channel one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. This looks so much better. And of course, not having all the electronics, electric parts exposed here feels a lot safer. It's uh, dark here now because I'm ready to test the lights. Are you prepared to see how it's gonna look like? I've taken down, finally, all my temporary work lights. So now let me turn this off as well.
What do you think? Does it look uh, nice? Before you judge, give any comments. Let us compare this one to how it was previously. This is quite much better, isn't it? And uh, what I really like now is that the light is much more even. Since I have lights uh, much more, should I say, distributed, the lights are five meters all the way out to the sides, I get a very even light. Uh, not evil, even light everywhere. One thing I noticed, these lights are more directional. The fluorescent lights, they were spreading the lights more to the sides and also upwards. So the ceiling now looks darker than before. Also, like the topmost part of the wall also looks a bit darker. While the floor and my work area looks much brighter. But I have a surprise for you. This is actually just 60% of the maximum power. Okay, okay, just kidding, just kidding. That was just cranking up the ISO on the camera, so that was fake. Now it's for real. Now it's 60%. This is 80%. This is 100%. And this is actually, yeah, it's so bright that uh, I will definitely not keep it as bright as this. Uh, it is actually sunglasses bright, but I can even add it brighter by adding in the colored uh, RGB lights, like uh, the blue. You can see I can get a really icy cold white here now. Or I can put in the red and I can turn down the bright white and now I have more like a mellow feeling here with the sunset or sunrise uh, feeling. And of course, I have the colored uh, RGB. Very useful, isn't it? And I can even make animations. And here is my light mixer. Just a quick overview. This is probably the cheapest one you can buy, cost $50. And I like it. It's so easy to use, at least the easy part of it. I control uh, by using these four buttons here, each row individually. And within each row, I use these six uh, here, uh, first sliders to control the white lights here and the RGB here, red green and blue. So it's easy to just set up uh, my lights exactly how I want it and then I can store it like a preset and add it to these buttons here. Um, and then you have a lot of programming stuff over here. That's terrible. No user friendliness there. It's really difficult and you need to read the user manual to even understand what to do. But it is possible to use it. It will probably not be used that much the most functions I need is just to be able to balance the lights and it works perfectly for that. And then it's time for the conclusion, my verdict. Is it worth it? Do I recommend you trying to build something similar? Not if you're going to save money, because this wasn't very cheap. I think the total cost, you will find it, a uh, breakdown of it in my description around $1,000. So it's not cheap, it will be much uh, cheaper to just buy uh, off-the-shelf regular garage lights, but this is a completely different level of the quality and of course all the fun you can have. Life is too short to not have fun and this is great fun. If you don't bother with this dimming, with the colors, 
and of course I have just too much light here, I can't even use it on full power. You could save uh, approximately half of the cost by skipping the dimming, just power it directly and uh, only use one cold white and one warm white, it would be plenty enough. So maybe $400, $500 and you will get a great light. So yes, 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 just do it now. Thank you.